All right, it's time for another... Uh, no, well, actually, this is my first time reviewing figures, so it's time to review figures, and we'll start up with Blaziken here. Uh, I'll go through all the figures that have been changed and or added in the latest banner. So, it is time now to um, review Blaziken a little bit. I'll start with that, and I'll say that while it looks very impressive, you can just look at the wheel here. 130 wide is really good. Just look at Deoxys A, and Deoxys A is very good at the moment. Uh, Cyclone Kick, of course, is also really good because it places the opponent in the PC, which it's it's very important to remember that it moves people to the PC and it doesn't knock out people. This, of course, makes... Uh, this is very, very, very important to think of when you're battling things like Magikarp and ho -Oh or... Other things like Snorlax, because Snorlax cannot be moved, so it will not be moved by Cyclone Kick. That is not to say I think we'll see Snorlax a whole lot. It's uh, I'll go over that later, because it also will appear later on the list. Jet Kick is also a move that's very interesting in that it, it can move you uh, by two steps, as you can read here, if you knock out the opponent. You know what I'm thinking about here when I'm looking at Cyclone Kick and Jet Kick together? It's 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 empty, Elios, and I'll give the star rating a little bit later. What I'm thinking about when I look at Jet Click Kick and Cyclone Kick together is that the two of them together is really good against Magikarp. One of them allows you to move, and the other allows you to Cyclone Kick. This means that if Magikarp attacks into Blaziken, there's a 50% chance, if you look at its half of its wheel, that... Either A, Blaze can jump to the other side of Magikarp, and then you just move another figure and surround it because of the move. Or B, Cyclone Kick kicks Magikarp to the PC without allowing its ability to evolve to take place. So it's really actually pretty good against Magikarp. Blaze is also really good against Gyarados, in my opinion, because it has some moves that can beat it, and even Jet Kick can beat Storm and stuff, so that's really nice. But overall... The jet kick and big misses actually kind of killed the figure a little bit for me because that's a lot of bad stuff. Not to mention, I also get completely destroyed by Mew. But I think that Blaziken is very good right now, but it's not a top tier figure. And you might want to think about if it's worth putting in your deck or not because it's a very risky figure and I would recommend running it with, with two double chances if you're going to run it. Overall, I'm going to give it a four star rating because, again... I think Blaziken is strong, but it's not the must-play figure. It definitely is a part of the meta right now. I give it four stars. All right, moving on to the next on the list here is going to be Entei. Entei, Entei, Entei. So Entei here is another figure that just got introduced this banner here that uh, continues the thing about fire figures apparently having a lot of miss. 12 miss is kind of bad, but it's not as bad as Blaziken or Heatran who have 16 base miss. Fierce Roar is... Uh, I mean, look at it. It switches the places of two opposing Pokemon they beside each other. That That's so rarely going to ever do anything. Of course, you can cheese a weight win because the, both the Pokemon you move can't wait. But most of the time, Fierce Roar is going to be just either A... Something that does nothing, or B, it's gonna kill you because people have actually what's called goat moves in this, like Mew. Will, oh god, could you stop that? Thank you. Mew will kill you because of this purple here. Uh, that doesn't that that doesn't mean that Mew actually counters and say I just I'm just saying it could happen, and that is very annoying. Uh, Sacred Fire, however, however, is a really good white move actually, but. 36 size makes it uh, not too reliable. And then there's Stomp, which is 60 damage is kind of bad on a 2 MP Pokemon. Let's just be honest about that. And Stomp doesn't have any extra effects either. Like, if it was like Grass Knot or Fire Fang, or at least had some other effect, then I'd be a good plus for this Pokemon. But, we cannot... We cannot forget that its ability Fire Rush exists, and that's very important to remember on this figure, because it does give it plus 1 MP when it's on the bench, meaning that you can use 
NTA for some aggressive plays. Uh, not in the very first turn if you start, but even from the second turn, you can just put it very far out. And because that's so much damage, it's going to be really hard to move. You can maybe do some hurdle jump shenanigans early, which does give it some potential. And and also, it can move past burnt Pokemon, I guess. But That can, of course, come into play. But since... I, I don't think you're going to actually make a burn deck happen in League. I honestly do not think that you're going to make a burn-centric burn deck work. Of course, there are some other good burn Pokemon in the format that are actually good, like Heatran. But I don't think it's enough. I'm going to give Entei... Oh, God. People are going to hate me for this one. Two stars. Uh, I, I, I honestly think that... Entei is not going to see a lot of League play. And remember, I'm actually not basing this rating here on the strength of the figure. But I'm basing on how much people are going to play it in League play. Not in how, oh, it's like if you're like 2,800 rated, you can play it. It's going to be really good. Yeah, of course it is. But if you're going to go to the high leagues and stuff where people are really good, people are not going to play Entei that much. I honestly think that Entei... Could have been much better if it uh, didn't have Stomp. Or if the purple actually did something useful. So it gets two stars in my opinion for be maybe seeing Fringe play because of Fire Rush's ability and the good damage on Sacred Fire. But I just think this figure could be better. Right, next up here in on the list here is going to be... Combuskin! Of course, when we're looking at Combuskin, we also have to think about Blaziken, by the way. And we have, again, Cyclone Kick, just like Blaziken is going to move people to the bench, which is actually, like, one of the best purples in the game. I, I maybe I might not have mentioned this about it before, but it's a really good purple. Like, against things like Ho or Magicka, but it's also going to be extremely good. Snorlax is the only exception where moving instead of knockout is not good, so in my opinion, the move part actually just makes it better. Of course, I gave Blaziken four stars, but I don't think that Combuskin is as good as Blaziken, even if you can evolve it into Blaziken. And the reason why is if you meet Deoxys, you kind of you can't really can't evolve Combuskin. What are you gonna do against? the Deoxys decks to evolve Combuskin. You could say that you'd use Combuskin against Deoxys A and hope to re hit Cyclone Kick twice, but that's really luck reliant. And that's the first point. And the second point is, because you have a 3 star purple, they can respin you onto the 3 star purple to counter you, uh, to, uh, count to stop their own dimensional slips. Which means they can make Combuskin action, Combuskin's three star purple actually work to their advantage, which kind of sucks. So, because you might as well play Blaziken that has a chance against Deoxys, I, I and I don't really think that the ten extra and stuff is gonna matter that much on Blaziken. I'm only gonna give Combuskin a two star rating because it's not horrible, but Cyclone Kick is really good still. It's just dead weight against the Oxys, and yeah, the, the Blaziken evolution is not that big a deal. Like, of course, it buffs you, the, the Blaziken, don't get me wrong, but it's not huge. Moving on. Wespy Quinn, let's just really, e if we had to talk about fun here, by the way, this would easily get more of the stars that I'm going to rate it, but I'll talk about it real quick here. So, Wespy Quinn, we have to look at, when we look at Wespy Quinn, at two things, and that is, one, the blue, and, and, and uh, wait, hold on, let me make that three things. One, we have to look at the blue, and two, we have to look at attack order. And the reason why the blue and attack order uh, is EP important to look at is because they have synergy. Now, uh, defend order, of course, moves a combi over to you, and attack order makes you deal more damage if you can't combis beside you. It's, it, that, it's pretty simple. The third thing we have to look at, at however, is how good is combi? 
I can give you a, a little quick look here. No? Okay. I'll tell you that that combi is quite eh. It's like sweet scent and 20 damage, I think it was. Something like that. Basically, it's alright, I guess. I mean, sweet scent does something. But attack aura is just... Like, most of the time, you're either gonna hit, gonna hit 80 or 110. And if you're gonna attack with Westby Queen, you're only gonna hit 80, because you have to move up, and then you won't have the neighboring combi, and then you will have to attack and only hit 80. I really don't think that even with Tropical Synergy and stuff like that, that Westby Quinn will see any League play. It's an entertaining figure, but for me, it just gets one star. One star because I don't think it's going to be seen in league play. Munslax. Oh. This is another really fun figure, guys. I really like Munslax because of the... Uh, because of the uh, eats anything attack. Which I'll explain very quickly. Basically, if you hit this purple, the... Uh, the oppo You can choose any one of the opponent's plates that is not used and make them used. And this will last until that uh, Munchlax gets off the field again by either knockout or cyclone kick it into the PC or whatever else can do it. Also, yeah, that's pretty much the, the thing here. Of course, that licks that paralyzes people. That's, that's a benefit, but... Mm, it's just eats anything that's interesting, but I honestly don't think that sabotaging your opponent's place is gonna be that useful. Unless you hit it against Kid Deoxys' Cosmo Energy, but then again, they can respin you, so how often is that gonna happen? Plus, if you wanna disable the Cosmo Energy plate for Deoxys, why not play Phantom? Because Phantom does that. Well, it, it does it for one Deoxys, but that Deoxys always happens. Happens to have the debuff until it gets knocked out of stuff. And you can use that to capitalize on it. Basically, I'm, what I'm saying is use Phantom instead. If you want to counter Deoxys by eating up the uh, Cosmo energy. Hold on, I should actually give this my star rating first. It obviously gets one star, because I honestly don't think Munchlax is that good. Even though it has interesting... Attacks. Right, let's just move on to Macby then. I honestly don't know what to say here. Like, it's just terrible. Of course, purple is nice. The damage sucks and the huge miss sucks too. The evolution is kind of bad because McMortar, even with two evolutions, kind of suck. Like, McMortar is just not good. Even with two illusions, it only reaches 80 damage, but how are you going to evolve Macby? Like, you have to get really, really lucky. That and Macby just gets murdered by Mewtwo. Well, you have to get some C level, you know, okay chance of surviving, but still. It's just, it's just not good enough, guys. Macby is not very good. You don't evolve it, don't try. I mean, unless you want to make a fun deck, then go ahead. But if you're going to play Serious League play, don't use Mac B. It gets one star. N terrible. Terrible is basic for a terrible evolution line. Ledian. Oh. The meme potential here is really high. Like, I absolutely adore Lady Ban Ledian. I played a few room matches with them even, and Swarm is just hilarious. Basically, what Swarm does is, instead of making a move with one of your figures, you can move a Ledian or Lediba next to another Ledian or Lediba. Which means that if they, you get some la Ladybugs over to their entry points, they'll never get them away again, because you'll just keep swarming and swarming and swarming, and keep going there and... It's going to be really, 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 really annoying with them. Also, guys, if you disagree, just just tell me no, open, over there in chat because then, you know, people can see it on YouTube and stuff. But even though it's meme, let's just really quickly uh, have a look at what it can do here. Air Slash, um, 50 damage. 50 bad damage is... Uh, eh... 
I Of course it gives weight, but it doesn't really do much. It it really does not do enough. Because it's just 50 damage, basically. The weight might sometimes go into play, but not enough to actually make 50 damage good. Double edge. This is actually a really good move for Ledian. The reason why is when you can keep swarming and stuff, and then you can just hope on some day landing double edge and knockouting Pokemon. In that way, you could kind of just keep swarming and swarming until you get lucky and hit double edge. So, double edge on Ledian is actually a really good move, but it's only 16. Which makes me sad. Mach Punch. 30 gold. That's pretty alright. I mean, it's a gold, so that's important. It's over 20, so even if you get poisoned, but not noxious, uh, you can still deal 10 damage and kill people, so... Nice. It's okay, but it's still not that good. Light Screen. Uh, it does nothing. It's just you survive. So... Okay, you, you have a good survivability tool there. However, the big problem here is you're going to get raped by Mew. I'm not going to put it lightly. You're just going to get destroyed by Mew. Unless you hit Air Slash. But Mew has a really good chance of killing Ledian. Uh, that's not to say it's still bad. Because you can just keep swarming if you get them in the right place. And it has Tropical Energy Synergy. And it has Molting Energy Synergy, synergy if you want to evolve Ledibar or something like that. Which would be fun. And make it less vulnerable to Mew too. But... I, I, I really don't want to do this. But I honestly don't think it's good enough for League Play. I'm going to have to give it one star. And that's just because Ledian doesn't really do much on its own. You need to do something to push. Like, it, you have to play a lot of Ledians and Ladybats to make it work. But those alone really have trouble actually doing anything because they don't have a good damage. And the one way they knock out people, double edge, is just not big enough. But of course, they also have gold, but that's still not reliable enough. So yeah, you're gonna you you're not gonna be good off with a Ledian deck. I don't think it's gonna work in, in league play. Sorry guys. Now onwards to combi, and that's um that's what we're gonna talk about uh, about the the um. Can't, can't be. Okay, actually, I didn't know it had thicket slip. That changes a little bit because, again, there's a. We all know that there's a lot of grass types out there, like Revision, Skeptile, that are really good, and I would give them five stars if I had to review them because Skeptile and Revision is just really good. Like, there's no getting around it. Skeptile and Revision are really meta right now because Deoxys is big and they get Tropical Energy Synergy and have really good moves against Deoxys. So there's, it, it's obvious that they're good. Uh, however, even though Vega Slip is good, I don't think that Combi is good. And that's the reason why is that Gust is absolutely terrible. Sweet Scent, I guess, is okay, but it's not. It doesn't have enough an effect. So, yeah, if you are gonna try rushing in with some Vega Slip shenanigans and all that, you're gonna get destroyed by Mew. And if you play it only for Thicket Slip, why not play Shop It? I mean, Shop It can just pass over everyone and not just Grass types, so... And people will probably just play around the fact that you can only pass through Grass types, so yeah. You can't really use this as a surround Pokemon, because Shop It just does that better. Also, Shop It has Phantom Energy Synergy, which if you play Shop It, you should play Phantom Energy, by the way. It's, it's, uh, it's really good, because Deoxys. But yeah, I think even with the Wespy Quinn cute synergy thing there, that combi is not very good. Uh, Wespy Quinn is not very good either, so it's gonna get the same rating as Wespy Quinn, which is one star. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of one stars, by the way. Uh, Metapod. Let's just really quickly look at Metapod here. Oh my god, I wish I could give this so much better a rating. Oh, Met Metapod is, is the figure that made me really sad, this banner. And the reason why is I was looking really forward to actually trying out Butterfree. Like, they're like, oh, let's buff Butterfree, and now Butterfree is actually good if you evolve it. Because it gets the compound eyes ability if you evolve it. And then they said in the same post... Oh, by the way, guys, we'll make Metapod very easy to evolve. So don't worry, guys. You're going to be getting those Butterfreeze easy. 
Then I see this. And I'm just disappointed. Do you under do you guys understand the amount of disappointment this figure gives me? One, it has zero MP, which is absolutely terrible. You have to use a plate to get out on the field, like Pokemon Switch, which is the obvious one because it only costs one. So yeah, that's the um, obvious way of getting out. But what if it doesn't su uh, it survive and get to evolve because of its ability? Which is, uh, if it if it doesn't get knocked down on ability, it can evolve. Then you're fucked, because you probably only play one Pokemon one Switch, unless you're gonna play two because of it. In which case, it costs two play slots to build this. The other thing you could do is play one Pokemon Switch and one Molting Energy. So I guess you could make Metapod work in a Molting Energy deck, but how good is Molting Energy? I don't think very good, that's the problem here, because there's not enough good... Buck flying Pokemon that need evolution other than Metapod. So I don't think it'll see League play because of that. Harden again. Let's just uh, talk about Harden. If it could survive an attack of 100 damage uh, or less, you know, it, it, it will do that because of Harden. But my question is, what, what damage is Meta right now? If your answer was 100 with C levels, you would be very correct. You see Sapdos, which has C levels all the time in League Play these days, at least 101. You see Virishion, you see Terrakion, you see Deoxys A and stuff like that. That's way more attack than 100, which means Metapod is not going to survive enough for it to be good on its own. So you have to play Molting Energy deck to make it evolve, but then... You know, it costs two plate slots and you have to build the rest of your deck around Molting Energy to actually get enough value out of that to, to say that two plate slots is worth getting a Butterfree. So this figure just disappointed me so hard. I'm, I can only give it one star because of the amount of disappointment this figure had. Hello and RS Gaming and welcome and let's just see I'm going over the reviews here. Yes, I absolutely hate Metapod. Because it's just such a disappointment. ho -Oh, Okay, let's talk about ho -Oh here. ho -Oh has been buffed in the recent patch here, which is uh, interesting. It's basically got less Gust and more Fire Blast. Which I honestly think is a good buff. Hold on, let me just get that one star out of the way. Because ho -Oh is not going to get one star. Spoiler alert. But yeah, Rainbow Wing is really good. Move you two step, that's actually really good. Gust sucks and Fire Blast is 100 damage, which is good if you get C levels on it. So, I would say if you want to play ho -Oh, you'd have to play, to put some C levels on it for it to be good. And you'd have to put those C levels on Fire Blast. Because then you can out-damage things like Sapdos, you can out-damage things like Revision and Terrakion, or at least tie with them. But because... There's so many com com much competition around 100, you have to get C levels to make ho -Oh good. At least two, I'd say. Um, as for the ability, the ability is amazing. Like, the ability is really good. ho -Oh without the ability would be like, okay, I guess it's a good figure. But the ability is what makes ho ho -Oh ho -Oh. And we all know this. We've seen ho -Oh, serene light ability, work all the time. Gives you your Pokemon back from your PC, revives them, puts them on your bench, and actually allows you to get good value and just push forward with five Pokemon in the late game instead of four. And that figure advantage can really be big. So I don't think Ho-Oh is um, a top tier figure. I don't think it's a bottom tier one. I think it's going to be right in the middle with three stars in that... It has Tropical Energy Synergy too, by the way. That's very important to mention because Tropical Energy is really good. But I think it really gets the free stars just because of the ability is really good and the moveset is pretty decent. Ho oh, may I would say three stars. Like it, it's all right. Could be good. That's correct, Irish Gaming. It, it's the thing is, it could be good. Moving on to the next one, which is going to be Typhlosion. Okay. So Typhlosion got an interesting buff in that its ability now gives it... Uh, 10 plus damage along with the 1 MP for each Pokemon in your, in your PC. Which means that its attacks are now going to hit 70 
and 110 while you have 3 MP. That's actually pretty good. Like 3 MP, 110 and a burn move. Really good. But what happens before you get the 3 MP? And this is the problem with Typhlosion. Where are 3 MP Pokemon the strongest? If you were to say in the early game, you would be correct. And Typhlosion is not a 3 MP Pokemon at the start of the game. It's a 1 MP Pokemon that is terribly annoying to get out because it's so slow. So I really don't think Typhlosion is going to see much play because, well, when you do get it out, it's not that strong. It's just decent. 3 MP is good, of course, but eh. It's, it's just not enough, in my opinion. It just lacks more... Like, if it just had less miss and a better attack than Ember, maybe you would see it a little bit in League play. But for now, it gets one star for being... not completely terrible, but just not good enough. Moving on to Genesect, which is... Uh, uh, I hate Banish on wide attacks and things like Curse. I'm, I enjoy Sukun's Banish, I enjoy Phantom Energy, but screw Dragons and screw Genesect. But let's look at it how it would be in League Play. So basically the buff that happened to Genesect is that if you activate Techno Charge, it will only remove the Techno Charge buff if it uses Techno Blast in battle, or if you get sent back to the bench or PC. This means that if you hit Techno Charge, and then you get to fight another Pokemon, and you hit Dodge, you will not lose Techno Charge bonus damage. Now, that's, um, of course, really nice, but let's look at the rest of the thing here. Techno Charge, of course, gives it 50 damage, of course, which uh, is going to make Techno Blast land at 50. Uh, plus 50, which is 100. 100 on a runner is pretty good. And this here actually has 3 MP from the start of the game, unlike Typhlosion. And on top of that, it has the Hover Jet ability. Now, I'm actually not going to give this a 1-star figure. I'm actually going to say this here gets a 2-star, in my opinion. And I'll talk about the rest of the things that are very important to know about this figure. Is that it has some plates that go along with it. That makes it so that if you use the plate and Genesect attacks a certain type. Then Genesect will be able to banish people. So basically you want to hit Techno Charge to get the extra damage. And kill people with the extra damage on Techno Blast. That's one option. The second one is played in a Freeze Banish deck. Freeze Banish, which is actually a deck I think could be played in League and work. Basically play something like Free Weewiles and Suicunes and Genesect. You use plates uh, with the drives to try and banish people when people get frozen because they attack your Weewiles. And you generally just try to make them uh, rage quit the game when you, they get banished. Overall, because it has this very interesting Banish Freeze deck behind it, which I kind of like. Oh, by the way, I have to mention Steel Energy Synergy, just uh, just putting that out there. And Tropical Energy Synergy, that's double on the Synergy along with the Drive Plates and all that. So it has a lot of Plate Synergy too. But overall, I don't think that the Freeze Banish deck is going to do that well against like full Deoxys and Tropical decks. Because Tropical Energy can also save you from Freeze and... With your mobility, you could do a lot of cool, crazy stuff. But overall, I think it's a two-star figure. And maybe if Deoxys was not in the format, I think the Genesec might see some more play in some interesting deck. But I really don't want Genesec to see more play. I hate being banished by wide attacks like this so much. Make more fair banishes that doesn't say, Oh, you got unlucky and hit your four miss against the Genesec with a drive plate. Doesn't that just feel good? No, I hate that. Put it on Suicune's purple way. They have to be frozen first or other things that I can't play around, please. But um, two stars for Genesect. Moving on. Snorlax. All right, so Snorlax here is the, the, the guy that everyone says, oh, this discounters version. You just put it on your goal and people can't really swap it around. And... 
That is true. It does very well against Revision because Body Slam 110 kills anything that's not Typhoon Slash. Typhoon Slash doesn't work because... Let's just talk about the ability real quick, actually. This Pokemon cannot be moved by attacks. That's a really good ability, by the way. Typhoon Slash. No. Cyclone Kick. No. Magma Slide. No. There are some really good displacement figures in the meta right now in Heatran version and Blaziken, which Snorlax can deny. And along with that, it has a 110 and the ability to sleep people. That's actually pretty nice. And has zero miss level 5. Nice. However, the problem with Snorlax lies in that it's 1 MP, guys. I hate to say it, but 1 MP just kills any figure that is not Trevenant, and actually Trevenant is pretty alright, and that's because it evolved from Phantom, and is really good in the meta because it's really good against Tropical. But anyways, what I'm going to say here is that because it's 1 MP and it has the 70 pound, which is just not enough to be a good damaging move, I cannot justify giving it more than 2 stars, even though I really like Snorlax a lot. I like the figure a lot, but no. No more than two stars. Hope you guys can appreciate that I only give two stars to Snorlax. I, I know there's a lot of people that actually like him a lot. Eevee! Yeah, Eevee is very interesting in that he got buffed so that he now has the ability molten, Molting Energy. I, I mean, uh, Spontaneous Evolution. Basically, it has Molting Energy built into it in that when it moves from the PC to the bench, it can evolve. So... You want to evolve good evolutions, and what good evolutions are there? Right now, I think the evolution you would evolve into is Leafeon. And that's because it has Tropical Energy Synergy, it has Figgit Slip, which is a really good ability, and... Two-star Leaf Whistle is pretty good against things like Typhoon Slash, where you can deny Typhoon Slashes with your two-star Leaf what a leaf whistle and basically you'll be able to compete more with pe other people's purples by tying with leaf whistle and it will be better at stalling and, and leaf is actually pretty all right i will give it three stars in the current meta but eevee i'm gonna say two stars because it has potential in that evolving to leaf can actually be good with the tropical synergy and stuff and you, you know eevee is not good itself it's just the Option to evolve to Leafeon that's uh, to Leafeon that's very good. Pinsir! Alright, so first off, it's Buck, which means it has tropical energy synergy. It doesn't evolve, not yet. There might be a mega in coming up in the future, so. Mm -hmm. So, no molting energy synergy, but as far as I know, molting energy is not gonna have any effect on metas, uh, on megas. Because Megas evolved in some kind of different way, so I don't know. But let's look at his moves. Guillotine for 20. It's a one-star purple that KOs people. Scissor toss. A move that moves people. And Vice Grip 50. Now, it also has 16 miss. That's very important to mention. Now, the thing that is really good on Pinsir is Guillotine. Scissor toss is decent. Vice Grip and miss sucks. If you had a much larger guillotine, I'm talking like half its wheel guillotine, then Pinsir would be playable. But as it is now, it's really bad. It's Mew fodder. Vice Grip can of course kill Mew, but most of its wheel dies to Mew. Uh, and even in other matchups, it just doesn't do enough. Like, guillotine is not reliable enough, and that's the only thing you want to really hit on that wheel. So, yeah. It gets a one star rating from me because it's just not good enough. Guillotine, make it larger, then maybe we'll talk about it later. Pinch of buffs, not impressive. Butterfree, oh god, this is like. We're moving back into disappointment land. I looked at Butterfree here at first and I was like, oh, this I like. And the reason why I really like it is that, one, it is buck and flying, which means in a tropical energy synergy, which is not really that big a deal, by the way, because it would be good even without tropical against Dio. And I'll get into that later. It has 28 miss, and you'll be like, oh my god, that's horrible. And I'll be like, 
No, because it has a good ability. The ability makes it that if it's evolved, if it lands a miss, it will switch onto the next attack. So basically, it's good if evolved because the rest of its move are actually pretty all right. But we have to again look at how good is it to evolve. And I rated one star of Metapod because Metapod disappoint me so much and make me angry. Pododius, Pokemon Dual Deus. Why, why do you do this to me? Why did you have to make Metapod so bad? Oh, by the way, as Rx is rightfully mentioning here in the... Uh, God damn it, wrong there. No! <laughs> in the chat right here, if it's burned or paralyzed, it has 100% purple, unless you max Psybeam, which you should not, by the way. You should at least give one to the purple, because, well, you should just max the purple. Just max the purple, alright? Basically, against Deoxys, it's really good. Let's talk about its Deoxys matchup. Deoxys Speed, it has a huge chance of landing 70 wide, which will kill Deoxys Speed. Deoxys Defense. You're gonna hit either a move that confuses Deoxys with its counter, or a purple that gives a status condition like Poison, Paralyze, or Fall Asleep. That's pretty alright. Like, the purple is not the part you wanna hit. It's the wide attack, so you can confuse Deoxys Defense. If you confuse Deoxys Defense, you have a huge, huge chance of winning against Deoxys in general, because... The strength of the Oxus X is really just swapping into DOD and stalling you like all hell. And that no one likes that. Stop it, the Oxus players. But really, if you can confuse DOD, really good. So it's very risky to switch into Butterfree with the Ox defense. Nope. Good matchup for Butterfree because of the confusion, even though it gets knocked out. Moving on to the Oxus attack. It gets confused, or it gets a special condition, or it dimensional slips. Butterfree, in my opinion, has a really good Deoxys AI matchup because even though it might get killed with the uh, miss or white, it's fine because the Deoxys A is confused, and confused Deoxys A is absolutely useless, so you'll still do something against it. Startling power is also really good, and one, it's a one star purple, so it's not gonna stop dimensional slip, and it's and gonna give some status conditions that might actually matter on Deoxys. Poison, gonna put it 110, that's actually pretty good. Or fall asleep, which is gonna make Deoxys, of course, fall asleep, stay there, and make them lose tempo, and then have to deal with sleep, which is annoying for them. So overall, Butterfree, if you can evolve it, really good. But because you can't easily evolve it, because Metapod is such a disappointment, and I hate it, it gets one star for Metapods being bad. Like, Butterfree, I love you, but you have to take one for the team because Metapod is a piece of shit. I'm sorry for being so mean. Torchic, one star. The ability is nice. The moves are just shit. The moves suck. You're not gonna evolve from Torchic. No, it's never gonna happen. Just, just don't. Don't dream that big, guys. No. Just, no. Cyndaquil, one star, we know this same story as, as um, Torchic actually, in my opinion, is worse than Torchic because it has one, it might have, uh, wait, did uh, Torchic have 3 MP? Yeah, it did. Cyndaquil is just, can deal more damage with Rally, of course, but eh, 60, meh. Don't dream this big again, and taught, And by the way, Typhlosion is, is not good enough to play anyways. If you want to play one of these two, Torchic is better because it evolves into something that's actually useful. You can't do this though, like, no. It's not gonna happen in one star. Evolve Torchic of me with X. Any competent player would not put, you, put their uh, Mew in range of your Torchic. That's not gonna happen. Sorry, RX, but no, they're not gonna let you that easily. And even then, it has a lot of mission. You could hit shuttle flip or even psychic against the. Uh, wait, no, never mind. Fuck psychic. It's not gonna good. And gonna do anything because it will hit sixty and seventy. Anyways, it's still trash in my opinion. Just play, place again. Right. 
that I think that oh wait no we have to rate one more thing here actually can I find the announcement with it just uh, before we go there was some new plates added molting energy I think it was called god damn no I don't want to go back no 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 thank you let's just talk about molting energy real quick and the and stuff like that the new plate that was added uh, why do we have the uh, new plate available in the shop? Molding energy. Basically, it's Eevee's ability on any buck and flying Pokemon. But now we have to question ourselves how good are buck and flying Pokemon that can evolve. Which Pokemon do you think of that comes to mind? I have one, Metapod. The rest are bad. Molding Energy would be good enough if the Pokemon you could evolve with it would actually be good. So, uh, the plate sucks because the bug and flying types suck. One star. But... Look out for this plate in the future if they release some good flying or buck types that can evolve, by the way. If they release enough to make a six Pokemon deck with Molting Energy, mo yeah, you might actually see this plate. It has potential in that way, but right now, one star. I think that'll conclude the uh, figure review then, and... Uh, to you guys watching this on YouTube, I'll say goodbye for now, and I hope you enjoy. Leave a comment down below, and let me know what you think of these kinds of figure reviews, and if I should do some for when the new figures will come out. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.